Did you know that your heart pumps 1.5 gallons of blood every minute? And even though your heart only weighs 10 ounces, which is the size of two baseballs, it pumps 2,000 gallons of blood every day. So your heart keeps blood circulating to every organ in your body. It's, it does it automatically. So it's something we really don't think about. But because of that, because we're not thinking about our heart health on a regular basis, that's why cardiovascular disease is one of the number one killers, but we're gonna do something about that today. So if you're new here, I'm Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com, and today we're gonna to cover the top 10 foods that you wanna eat for healthier arteries. So if for some reason you're not physically active or you lead a stressful lifestyle, or you have high cholesterol, or you just wanna take better care of your heart because you have a genetic predisposition to heart disease, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm gonna say in this video. So here are the top 10 foods you wanna be adding to your diet for healthier arteries. So number one is avocados. So avocados are one of the richest sources of heart healthy fats on the planet. They contain a host of good fats, which are also called unsaturated fats that are really healthy for your heart and for your cardiovascular system. So unsaturated fats give your body energy, but without clogging your arteries. Avocados also contain oleic acid, which is proven to be responsible for reduction of inflammation in your body. Inflammation is notoriously connected to higher risk for cardiovascular disease, so avocados are a game changer. If you've ever heard of triglycerides, they're one of the first fats that your doctors look at if they suspect you're at risk for cardiovascular disease. Because if your triglycerides are too high, you're more in danger of developing heart disease. And the research shows that avocados decrease that risk by 20%. They also do the same with LDL cholesterol, also termed bad cholesterol, because that type of cholesterol can lead to a whole host of bad outcomes in the body. Avocado not only helps reduce inflammation and bad fats in the body, but it's also loaded with nutrients. So it's full of vitamin K, vitamin B6, vitamin C. It also has folate, magnesium, and zinc. It's also loaded with glutathione. It's one of the top foods that are the highest in glutathione. And glutathione is your body's master antioxidant that helps you detox heavy metals and chemicals. And I bet that you didn't know this either. It's also loaded with potassium. Avocados have more potassium than bananas. I also love avocados because they're so simple to eat. You can add them to salads. You can put them on toast. I love avocado toast. And you can also just simply sprinkle some salt and lime on them. And they're super delicious, super healthy. So number two is asparagus. So asparagus is another heart healthy food. It's loaded with B6, which can help to regulate amino acids. Asparagus is also really high in folic acid. It's also high in thiamine, which is vitamin B1, and it's also high in fat-soluble vitamins A and C. So a five ounce serving has 60% of the daily recommended intake for folic acid, which helps to make more red blood cells. And as you can probably guess, it's a vegetable, it's super low in calories. And I feel like most people's main objection to asparagus is they don't know how to make it taste good, but there's lots of videos these days on YouTube and TikTok so you can make it taste super, super good. I happen to love asparagus. I have to cook it really, really lightly and have it with some eggs in the morning, super delicious. There's one particular soluble fiber in asparagus that's shown the research to help lower the risk for cardiovascular disease. So asparagus is definitely one of the foods you wanna to add to your list for healthy heart and arteries. So number three is pomegranate. So I love drinking pomegranate juice and it's something you definitely wanna incorporate into your diet to reduce inflammation and for healthier arteries. So have you ever peeled your own pomegranate? So it's not exactly easy. There's a technique to it. You wanna cut it in sixes. You just wanna kind of peel the outside of the pomegranate and put it underwater and peel it underwater that makes it a lot easier. There are also incredible studies out there that show that pomegranate juice helps reverse hardened arteries or atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is actually a precursor to heart attack, so it's something you definitely want to be on the lookout for to work on reversing before you get into that danger zone. Pomegranates are also a great choice for this. Pomegranates help to increase blood flow through the arteries and also prevent them from becoming stiff and thick. It may also help to slow the growth of plaque and buildup of cholesterol inside the arterial walls. So you can eat pomegranate seeds in a variety of ways. You can add them to salads, you can eat them by themselves. You can also just buy the pomegranate juice. I love the palm brand of pomegranate juice and I've also found it freshly juiced at my local farmer's market as well. Next, we're on to the vegetable that helps to divide the nation. Like some people hate it, some people love it. Yes, I'm talking about broccoli. Broccoli is number four on the list. So why should you join Team Broccoli? 
because this vegetable is super good for your heart. It's packed with calcium, iron, potassium, zinc, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and a ton of other good vitamins. So one cup of broccoli has as much vitamin C as an orange, which totally blows my mind. And you need this antioxidant to promote repair throughout your body, which is obviously gonna be really good for arterial health. It also has vitamins A, B6, B12, D, E, and K. So it's got a lot of fat soluble vitamins. But my favorite is vitamin K because it prevents calcium from depositing into your arterial walls. So what happens is if you're taking too much calcium, you're not taking the right type of calcium, and you're also not getting the cofactors for calcium like vitamin D and vitamin K, that calcium can deposit in your soft tissues rather than your bones where it belongs. So super important to eat foods with vitamin K and vitamin D in them. So some of my favorite ways to enjoy broccoli is just having them raw and dipped into some hummus or some another type of dip that you like. You can lightly steam them, you can drown them in butter, you can put some cheddar cheese on them. You can also make broccoli soup out of them, which is one of my favorite ways to eat them. So many different ways to enjoy broccoli. So number five is turmeric. So this spice is highly anti-inflammatory due to a special component in it called curcumin. So it contains curcuminoids that help to reduce inflammation in your arteries. Massive amounts of research to show that it's so heart healthy. In fact, curcumin is as anti-inflammatory as some drugs you can get at the pharmacy. So if you've never eaten turmeric before, don't be intimidated by it. There's a lot of different ways to incorporate it into your diet. I love adding it to rice dishes. You can add it to soups. You can add it to sauces. Lots of ways to incorporate heart healthy turmeric into your diet. So this next food is something you may not have tried before. It's number six on our list. It's called persimmons. So persimmons contain nearly twice as much soluble fiber as apples and also contains lots of major antioxidants, which is why it's making our list today. Recent research shows that only one medium-sized persimmon a day can help to reverse atherosclerosis. So these may not be your go-to fruit when you go to the grocery store, but I encourage you to ask your clerk where are the persimmons next time you go and try them. They're absolutely delicious. They're available in the fall. That's a season for them. You can also find them at your local farmer's market. So you can eat them on their own. You can add them to smoothies that are sold in a lot of different places, dried. You can cut them up and just eat them by themselves or put them in salads, uh, make sauces out of them. Lots of delicious ways to enjoy persimmons. So number seven on our list is cinnamon. So when it comes to antioxidants, cinnamon even outperforms garlic and oregano. So around 120 milligrams a day of cinnamon can help to reduce your total cholesterol. It can also help to reduce your bad cholesterol. There's also supplements that you can take. So there's supplements that have cinnamon extract. Those are probably the ideal way to go because 120 milligrams a day is a lot of cinnamon but I encourage you to sprinkle it on all the foods that you can. You can put it in your coffee, you can put it on top of oatmeal, you can mix it into different keto desserts, lots of different ways you can incorporate cinnamon into your diet. So number eight is spirulina. So spirulina is an algae and it's believed to be one of the oldest foods on the earth. It's super, super nutrient dense. It has over 40 different nutrients in it including all the amino acids that you need. This is one I think everybody should be taking every single day. And because it's so rich in antioxidants, it helps to reduce blood pressure and to relax your arterial walls as well. Spirulina specifically can help to reduce stress on your arteries, which will help to reduce your risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. So for centuries, spirulina has been prized for being a super high nutrient density food. And I'm sure there's some hipsters in your town right now that are taking a photo next to a fridge with some bright blue liquid in it. So that's spirulina. Even though it doesn't taste that good, I mean, it's algae. I mean, come on, what do you expect? It's super, super healthy for you. And you can mix it with other juices to make it taste a little bit better. Or you can buy it compressed into capsules. I love the brand Energy Bits. That's the brand that I take of spirulina. Super, super good. Just little tablets, compressed. You can just take five or 10 of those a day, take them throughout the day with some water and it doesn't really taste as bad. So protein levels in one serving of spirulina is comparable to two eggs. I bet you didn't know that as spirulina has complete proteins in it and it's one of the highest nutrient dense protein foods on the planet as well. So next food on our list is number nine, it's cranberries. So cranberries provide really unique bioactive compounds that help to improve cardiovascular health and reduce inflammation. 
Are you noticing a pattern yet? So all of these foods help to reduce inflammation and help to unclog your arteries. I was stunned to find out that you can reduce your overall risk of cardiovascular disease by 40% just by being a regular cranberry juice drinker. Don't forget though that a lot of juices have added sugar to them. Make sure you get an organic cranberry juice and also skip the cranberry sodas. Those are gonna have little to no cranberry or have artificial flavoring in them. Also, just on a side note, if you wanna find out about some really scary foods that should be banned, check out my video right here, the top 10 most dangerous foods in the world. This is stuff they are not teaching in school at all. You wanna know what's in this video. I dare you to watch it. So this video is getting a little bit long, so let's wrap this up with the very last food on my list, number 10, it's green tea. So green tea had its 15 seconds of fame because it helps to aid weight loss, but the catechins in green tea, which is a really powerful antioxidant, also helps to reduce the absorption of cholesterol during digestion. So drinking a cup each day helps to improve your blood lipid levels, and it also helps to keep your blood vessels healthy and flexible. So green tea drinkers also have a 31% reduced risk of heart disease than non-drinkers. So I dare you to skip your morning cup of coffee and switch to green tea instead. I love green tea. I drink a jasmine green tea. It's super, super delicious. It's really, really fragrant. I put some stevia in it, so there's no inflammatory sugar. It's one of my favorite mid-afternoon drinks as well when I want to get my turn my brain on. So highly recommend it. Skip that coffee, go for green tea instead. It still has a little bit of caffeine in it, just so you know. Green tea not only protects your heart, but it also protects your brain as well. It also can kill bacteria in your mouth. So let's recap. So one of the top ways to help your cardiac health, your heart health, and your arterial health is to incorporate wholesome, natural, organic foods into your diet and start adding these foods that I mentioned, even though some may seem weird to you, just try some recipes here and there, try them at a restaurant, just add these to your diet if you wanna see some improvements in your artery health. So alongside the physical activity, choosing foods with anti-inflammatory and high antioxidant components to them are crucial. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next video.